Welcome back to Time Series Analysis. What we're going to look at today is regression-based models, the third part of that. We will start with what's called exponential smoothing, and then we'll go extend the global models that we looked at in the previous session to local models. And then at the end, we will talk about operators, in particular the backward shift operator and how operators are linked together. Okay, so, so far everything that we've done is model-based. One model for all the data that we have. So what happens if no model actually fits our needs? And thereby you can say the data cannot be fitted by one particular model. Well, we can do something that we don't want to have a model for all the data, but just want to use the most recent data. So we're trying to, to say what is actually the interest if it's just a prediction. Maybe we can do that without considering everything. One such case is what is called exponential smoothing. What we'll do is that we use a forgetting factor, lambda, that is numbered between 0 and 1. 1 means that we remember everything, and then we can do that to estimate a mean value by making a weighted sum of all the previous observations, where the weight that we use here is lambda to the j power, and j is how many steps backwards in time is the observation that we're looking at. So that means that the most recent observation has weight 1, and then it becomes one, lambda to the first power down to lambda to the n minus 1 power. Now, in order to calculate a mean value, we also need the sum of these weights to be 1. To do that, we just calculate a constant that we pre-multiply on all these things. And what we find is that that constant should be 1 minus lambda divided by 1 minus lambda to the n power. So with that altogether, we can at any time have an estimate. Now, when n becomes large and lambda is not too close to 1, then lambda to the n power is effectively going very close to 0. That means that we can just say that we have our estimate at time n is 1 minus lambda times the weights of all the previous ones. Okay, so what is the difference between the two things? Well, if we start splitting this up and look at, well, that's the weight on the most recent, and then we have that on the, all the previous ones. Now, if we look at everything that is in here in the square parenthesis, if we take a lambda out, this is exactly, this lambda out, this is exactly our estimate from the time just before. That is the sum that how it looked like for n minus 1 instead of for n that we're looking at right now. So what we effectively have is that, so what we effectively had is 1 minus lambda times the most recent observation plus lambda times our previous estimate. So this is how you can do it when n is large. And we can also just call this simple exponential smoothing and just do it. But it actually equ equivalent to exponential smoothing when n is sufficiently large. So here's also clear that lambda says how much emphasis do we put on our previous estimate. And then we have 1 minus lambda as weight on our most recent estimate. So if we want to predict with this model, since what we estimate is a mean value, what do we actually do to predict? Well, if you estimate a mean value, your prediction will be that particular value. So that means no matter to what horizon you predict, n plus l, you will always just use a conditional information of the time n, then you just use the estimate at time n. So, how do you update that? Whenever you get a new observation, you do the same thing as you did on the previous slide at time n plus 1. Then you get an update prediction at n plus l plus 1, given information up to time n plus 1. So this does not mean that you should use your predictions to update future predictions. You should only use this if you're always running at a particular prediction horizon. 
often you will run with L equals 1, but I will also show examples where L is greater than 1. So, as said before, for simple exponential smoothing, we have this particular expression here. Now, what we will often do in practice is to say, well, I know this only holds when we get to a large n, but let's just start setting the initial estimate equal to the first observation and then run the same way anyhow. This is what we call simple exponential smoothing. So the only difference here is I have shifted time, 1. So instead of mu n plus 1 and y n plus 1 and mu n here, then I have s n, y n, and then s n minus 1. So the lags are just noted one below, just to show the way that it's often seen. Again, everything else behaves the same. What is left now is how do you choose the smoothing constant? Often also times called alpha, defined as 1 minus lambda. So alpha is then the weight on the most recent observation, where lambda is the weight on our previous estimate. So, how do we choose this? Often what we've done previously is to minimize the sum of squares. So what we'll do now is that we'll look at our prediction errors. So in general here for L-like prediction, but let's just think of it as one-step predictions. Doesn't really matter, it's just a matter of how you code things. So you have a sum of squared prediction errors here for a given alpha or lambda, however you like to run it. And we'll just do the either the simple exponential smoothing or the general exponential smoothing where we use the correct factor as our prediction model. And then we just have to find the alpha that minimizes that sum of square prediction errors. So that's pretty much how we usually do things. Now, if you have many observations, then the initial estimate, so what I just said before, you just start with the first estimate of mu to be, say, mu1, to be the first observation. Maybe there's much noise in the system, so you don't want to use that. Then what you should do is to just skip the first elements in this sum. So you can, instead of starting the sum from t equals 1, you can just start from t equals, say, 10 or 100 if you have sufficient number of observations. So keep in mind again what the smoothing is used for and use the criteria that matches your needs.